<laughs> I knew you couldn't get enough of our sexy content. Let's have a quickie. Hey friends, it's Mariah here, tuning in for a quickie. Um, and we're actually going to talk about exactly what happens during a quickie. Before I get into that, um, I'm just going to roll the usual stuff. Um, if you don't know me, I'm Mariah. I'm the host of the Salty Sex Cast. I have a master's degree in health promotion and education. Um, I'm also a certified health, um, health and wellness coach. Wow, all the things just left me because I'm just so excited to talk about our topic today. Um, but I'm also a, a certified health education specialist. So health education, health coaching, and everything in between is very important to me. So accurate information and information sharing is also really important to me. And so that is a piece that we're going to share today on this episode about the four phases of sexual arousal. Um, researchers, Masters and Johnson, were the first to talk about this four-phase model. But really, um, you know, we can think of it as like this chart of excitement is coming up and then you have a slight plateau and then an orgasm who pops the chart back up and then a resolution that goes down. So if we're following this little um, line graph, like that's what it would look like. Um, but it can look so different for everybody, but that's the typical four stages or four phases of sexual arousal. Um, what happens in some of them are very different, especially depending on, on your sex um, and what sexual organs you have. So I am going to refer to men and women differently. Of course, we know there is a spectrum of folks all in between those two, but at least for this conversation today, I'm going to compare those two main differences. Um, let's first start by that excitement phase. We all know this is like the turn on phase. I'm getting horny. I'm turning on. Something has triggered this, whether it can be an image, it can be a thought, it could be a smell, it could be a touch. Like there's so many different ways to get this started. Um, and, but typically we know it's like, here's more, you know, our blood pressure height or starts to rise our breath quickens, our heart rate definitely starts quickening, that blood rush. Sometimes some folks get a little flushed. Um, this is when our penis owners, they're going to get hard and erect. And our vulva owners are typically going to start becoming their vagina canal. Vaginal canal is going to become lubricant. And this is like getting wet, right? Um, but there's other things too that start happening. Uh, either sex or or anyone usually can start getting like their nipples hard and erect. Uh, sometimes even the variation of color and the are areola can darken a little bit. Again, more of that flush. So there's all these tips that like, okay, hey, we're on this excitement phase. The, the interesting thing about this, this excitement phase is it's so varying across different folks and how often we are are in this space, it can take several hours for some to get to that excitement for that excitement phase to last. And some, it can take less than a minute, like boom, ready to go. Um, so it's just really important to understand that varying people need varying stimulus to get to that and get in that excitement phase and keep that excitement phase. Um, sometimes there's interventions um, that can support that as well. So that's not what we're going to cover today, but maybe another episode. Um, and then the plateau is really exciting because this is like, you, you think of a plateau as a straight line, right? Or, or leveling out. Um, but I would say I more compare it to that slow buildup. Um, however, most women will say also like, don't change whatever's happening. We're getting close to orgasm. So this is like, I always just imagine the plateau of like just keeping things the same. Um, usually 
This can last anywhere from just a couple of seconds to maybe several minutes. So it's that buildup, it's that kind of consistent rhythm. And this is also when maybe like um, involuntary muscle contractions can start happening, like a twitch of the back, like a fling of the leg, um, like we're getting closer. Uh, for men, their testicles will start to enlarge and actually retract. Like there's some things moving of what's really interesting with women. Um, the uterus can start elevating a little bit higher. Um, and like, there's just some things that start happening, but a big one is you're going to start getting a little bit more of that blood pressure and things are kind of in the heart rate starting to just start to extend. Um, but right at the moment of orgasm, that is where our blood pressure, heart rate, and our breathing rate are at the maximum level. And, um, usually this is a lot of involuntary muscular spasms. Both sexes will have, um, their rectal sphincter usually having some spasms, um, or throughout the whole body, other things can happen or, or even just like that clench altogether. So it can be spasms. It can all just be like, um, you know, this hard flex everywhere. Women will typically have rhythmic contractions of both their uterine wall and their vaginal wall. So just kind of being aware. And that's why sometimes folks will say like, have sex and have an orgasm to get labor started because you're having contractions, like you're, you're making your body um, tense up. Typically those rhythmic contractions are around three to five times that it'll contract. So something that's kind of been fun for me is if I'm in the right mind, I'll actually count how many contractions or, or um, yeah, contractions that I'll have um, in my vaginal canal just because it's, it's just interesting to kind of see like, was that a really, um, and, and how quickly they come or how long, uh, because sometimes I can measure the different types of orgasms I have. But there's also another thing, typically with age, you're going to have less of those contractions too. So it's just kind of interesting to watch and see how those fluctuate for yourself. Um, for men, this is the emission and expulsion phase. So emission is when seminal fluid starts pooling up um, inside the body um, through internal contractions. And then obviously expulsion um, when semen is expelled um, by contractions from the muscles at the base of the penis. Um, this is when they come, the ejaculant, the spurt, whatever, uh, splooge, all those fun things that we can call this, but those are the two. Then right after orgasm, we go into resolution phase. Or if there isn't an orgasm, but you can still go into resolution phase. Um, this is when everything starts to calm down, when, um, you know, your heart rate and your breathing and everything kind of levels out. Typically right after an orgasm, that's going to level out quite quickly. Um, for men, it's almost a drastic drop off. Um, and right towards the beginning of that resolution phase, that's that refractory period. So even if you don't go all the way down to like baseline level before excitement, um, that retractory period, you can refractory period, <laughs> men can go back up into excitement as well. And so can women. Um, and so that's where like multiple orgasms can happen where that resolution phase is actually quite shortened before they get to baseline level and then jump right back into excitement, plateau, and orgasm. So it's really cool to kind of see how that all works. Um, but if there isn't an orgasm, usually this will take a long time to happen. You kind of slowly taper off, um, but men will lose their erection, women, their, their, um, vulva and clitoris will go back to like a normal size, won't be as, as erect or flushed or, um, even in the, like puffy. Sometimes there's a lot of blood that gets there. So sometimes it's a little enlarged. Um, but it's just kind of interesting to see how these different phases work in with one another and, and what your body does during them. So, like I said, I I'll count, <laughs> 
<laughs> my rhythmic contractions. I'll just kind of notice what this looks like. And I never really attach to the thought of the word plateau because I feel that build. It's almost like this build of like a wave just kind of coming right before it crashes down. Um, so if you wanted to imagine it, however you, it is, but that is um, a big piece of what I imagine and what's kind of going on internally. And for me, it's nice to know some of these phases because then I am understanding what's happening, especially as I am an overthinker and cannot or will struggle to get out of my own head when I'm being intimate and having sex and or or personal play, all of those things, that it's just a fun way to kind of really be immersed into the experience and that it's not with the goal of orgasm in mind where it's like, oh, sex, sex to come, sex to come and, or sex to orgasm, sorry, sex to come makes it sound like it's going to come next um, or later, uh, but more of it's, it's this experience with different phases. And there are a few other different ways that you can look at arousal, sexual arousal, um, Masters and Johnson, this four phase model, it's typically the most popular, but anyway, thought it would be fun to get a little, um, book, book smart here and <laughs> have some accurate things to share with you all. I, I just appreciate you tuning in and listening and, or watching if you're on YouTube, um, and whatever platform you are on and tuning in, I just want to say thank you. Please don't forget to subscribe definitely to share with somebody you think that this would be a meaningful podcast for them to tune into. And um, yeah, I'll see you next week for our long interview episode. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for the quickie. See you next week.